that I hate exercise. Okay? Like today, my, my sons want me to go, and I say, oh my God, I don't want to do it. My body aches. But you know what? I drag my body to the pool, and I plunge myself in, and if I don't swim, I'm going to die. So, <laughs> so I have to swim. You know, because I'm 48, all my joints hurt when I exercise. Yeah, when I run, it hurts. Everywhere it hurts, okay? Because I'm sick, okay? But here's a, here's, a, here's a point. If I don't will myself physically with my hands and my feet to do something, up here it's just a piece of brain I'm thinking, wishing. Nothing going to go down to my heart, my desire. And it's proven and it's clearly, that's why the scripture is very clear. You go for the heart and not for the head. It's the desire, it's your passion. People who are successful and achieving the objective, not because they're smart. Wrong. Because they're passionate about it. I do this, frankly, I spend a whole day at this. Let me get my wife to prepare all this, okay? All day. Because to me, it gets down to this basic. You've got to understand this. It's not about what you know. It's about what you desire with your heart. It's the same thing. Think about relationship. You know, how, how do you know you love somebody? It's not because like you think you love somebody. No, it's a desire in your heart. But it's the hands that buy the flowers. It's the hands that write the note. You see, the 18 inches gap between your head and your heart is your hand. You're going to activate your heart as you will yourself to do it. And so the bottom line is the trick and the reality of life is not about just the separation between what's in the head and what's in the heart. But you've got to do the baby steps in between. And that's why you set goals realistically, you do it. Okay? If I want to lower my blood sugar, I've got to drag my body to the pool and start swimming. Okay? Simple as that. If you want to set realistic goals, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be uh, an engineer, you want to go to whatever that job, you get yourself to that point. Now you say you don't know. What do you do? Well, you go to God, you ask God, and then you go to uh, people with wisdom and you say, what am I good at? Well, I don't know, let's give a test. Okay? And then you say, do you like this? I don't know, okay. You want to be, I, I talked to this kid, he says, he, don't want to, uh, he want to be a nurse, okay? I said, well, did you ever talk to a nurse? No? Well, here she is, talk to her. But, but up to this point, I haven't heard the kid call my wife and ask about nursing. You want to be a lawyer? Talk to a lawyer. You, whatever that is, you set the goals and you take the baby step. What I call, let's take the punch. Okay? If I want to lower my sugar, i got to exercise. If I want to lose weight, I have to exercise. And my son says, eat less, Dad. <laughs> right? So my head wanted to be thin, right? It doesn't matter what I think. Now, sure, if I'm passionate about it, I'll do it, right? I mean, I don't know, these guys, what's your passion about? I don't know. Tell me, what's your passion? Oh, yeah. What's, what's the one thing that you will do? Yeah, I'm fine doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you have no passion. Come on. Give me one passion. What one passion you would like to do? One thing. I don't find a creative outlet. Okay. What would that be? Photography. Photography. Okay. So it's something that even if they don't pay you, you still do it. Yeah. Because it's a passion. We will do. We will do what we're passionate about. But the passion doesn't begin by by itself. You see, this is where, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to give it to you and you got to get this. Or right, this, this is the success of your life is going to be the money. Because a lot of people don't understand this. So they get stuck with their idea that in order for you to get passion, is that you've got to think about it and you have to dream about it. Wrong. The passion comes between your head and your heart. It's through your hands, your feet. You do it. But you don't have to do some bigger thing. Do the little things. You start out with a little stuff with the photography, and then you build it up. It's like 
I don't get to this point of ministry where I give up my job, my good paying job to do this, and practically not get, get paid for nothing, because I will myself to do it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to be passionate about it. And how? You start with little stuff, and you do it. So, the answer between your head and your heart, the 18 inch gap here, is doing it. Okay? I see David does it all the time. Can I share with them on this? No. He's and this is Kevin's fault. Because <laughs> I homeschool him, I know. This kid, every once in a while, he goes to the living room, and he tries to stand on his head. No. <laughs> now, I have to say, he's very passionate about it. Because nobody made him. No, I mean like with his hands. Not on his head, but with his hands. Or like hands. One of those like, hands stand on his head, upside down, whatever. That's it. That's the example. So, whatever you are inspired to do, start the little thing. Just do it. Okay? Just do it. Because that's the reality. Now, we may profess to be Christians, and you know there are a lot of people in the church or in your fellowship, uh, but every day our, our, our habits, our behaviors, is taken up from satisfying the material of the, or, or the flesh. Our worldview is sensual and materialistic, rather than spiritual one. So people say, oh no, I think I am a Christian, because I know I'm saved. But you're not living it, you're not having that habit, because you're not doing anything about it. You see, that is where people are falling, <clears throat> flat on their face. And it's the very same thing that's happening to us all. It's not about what you think you are, but it's about what you do as you bridge the gap of who you really are in Christ. Okay? So, this English ministry will not be honoring to Jesus until we're driven to know Him through the study of His Word. Okay? And that the best Bible study method is inductive so that we're going to learn. But just if you're going to walk away from any practical thing that I would share with you today, think about that five things of how to set goals and make decisions. One, set realistic, attainable goals as you learn to know about God and God know about yourself and your gifts. Two, trust and put your hope in God that God will, will give you those goals and achieve those goals. Three, dream beyond the impossible, meaning dream bigger than what before you, okay? And then whatever happens, you rest in God's providence and accept that God has a better plan for you. And if need be, you make the change of your goals. Do not curse God and do not think that it's the end of the world just the beginning. So those are the five things that you can walk away. But in all these things, knowing that it's the Bible that you need to study, that's how you know God. The reality of life is not about what we want in our head, but what we are passionate about in our heart. And the way we get to our passions is by the little things that you do. And just do it. People don't get there because because they get stuck. Nobody sat down like tonight and say, Kevin, you want to go there? Take the little baby step. Okay? I speak to myself, look, you want to lose weight? Get in the pool. Okay? You want to get a job? Go apply. Okay? You want a girlfriend? Keep asking. <laughs> okay? You want a boyfriend? <laughs> Make yourself available. Okay? Simple as that. I don't know how easy it can get. It's the same thing. I get back to the same five things. Do you want her? Does she want you? Can you afford her? Will they let you? And you're together. It's so easy. And so I'm getting it to down to you five things that you can move forward. And you can actually apply to every single thing in life. Because this truth is God's truth. It's in here. It's in here. Okay? I might not give you all the scripture verses, but this is real life. So let me bless you, and then we're going to have a good time. God, I thank you for uh, moving in the midst of us tonight. I know it's tough, 
but I trust that your spirit will work through uh, this truth 